You guys are gonna be disappointed in me. But I've been using the 15 Pro Max for a little bit now. I do want to talk about why I've chose to use the 15 Pro Max over like the last week, pretty much since the iOS 18 announcement. But before we do that, I think I'm going to need a coffee. Can I get a medium iced coffee with light sugar, please? Okay, the coffee is secure. <laughs> mm. I could finally feel awake now. So yeah, I've been using the 15 Pro Max for the last little while now, and obviously there's some reasons, like I wanted to try out iOS 18, but there's a lot that I've actually found myself liking about this phone. Not necessarily liking more than the S24 Ultra or whatever, but I think it's time that I start carrying two phones. So let me go find a place to sit outside, and I'm gonna tell you what I like about the iPhone 15 Pro Max after nearly a year of it being released. This video is brought to you by Opera. Are you looking for a better way to stay focused online? Opera browser is a fast, lightweight web browser with a lot of unique features that make your browsing more productive and enjoyable. With tab islands, tabs are easily arranged into separate groups based on related content. These tabs can be expanded, collapsed, or rearranged to save space and make browsing more effortless than before. There's also a free and unlimited VPN inside of Opera for safe and secure browsing, along with built-in ad blocker to block all ads on a website with just one click for a smooth and fast browsing experience. Opera also includes Aria, a free AI tool to give you instant answers for any questions that you have directly in the Opera sidebar. And just by highlighting any text, you can ask Aria to expand upon it, giving you an explanation, a summary of the topic, and even translations. My favorite feature inside of Opera is the ability to pop out a YouTube video and browse while still having the video I'm enjoying overlaid on top of other web pages so that I don't miss a beat. It's also a resizable floating window that you can move anywhere within the Opera browser. Another nice thing that Opera does to make my browsing experience better is keep my favorite web pages such as social media like X and WhatsApp in the sidebar to easily keep up with what's new. It also automatically opens these quick access pages in split view so you don't miss out on what you're already engaged in. There's a plethora of customization options allowing you to really customize Opera and make it look like your own. Use the link in the description to download Opera and browse better. Thank you, Opera, for sponsoring this video. It is an absolutely beautiful day in Canada, and I'm just glad because that means that I get to film this video outside and not be freezing cold. So there's a couple things that I wanna talk about, like why I've been actually carrying the iPhone 15 Pro Max over the last couple of weeks, despite what I said about this phone previously, especially considering how much I like the S24 Ultra. So let's talk about a couple things. First things first, let me just start off with the hardware. The iPhone 15 Pro Max is honestly a really well put together device. There's a lot of things that I like about this phone, especially when it comes to the overall comfort and the design. Now, when it comes to like a content viewing perspective, I'm not necessarily a fan of having rounded edges on my device, but I will let it slide because it does make this phone a lot more comfortable in the hand, especially after long hours of using it. It's been eight months since this phone has been out, and my opinion on it has changed drastically. A lot of that though is because of the iOS update with iOS 18, but there are some things that maybe I was a little too harsh on Apple for. This phone is really well built, and despite the fact the display, say, isn't as bright as the S24 Ultra or doesn't have that anti-reflective coating on it, when it is a sunny day, I'm able to use this phone comfortably, even like today, and Honestly, I don't really have any complaints. It's very easy to make out what I'm doing. Yes, the anti-reflective coating on the S24 Ultra is really nice to have, but as far as the overall usability goes, I don't think it really impacts the 15 Pro Max all that much especially not enough to make it a complaint. It's really weird because of how used to having USB-C I am, but when I bought this phone again after not having one for a few months, it kind of struck me that USB-C on this device was a big deal. Like looking back, it was absolutely insane that we can actually just take this device, plug in an SSD, and record ProRes log directly to it. I think that from a usability standpoint, the 15 Pro Max has changed so much and has added so many great features that while they were or standard in the market really go to show you Apple's polish when it comes to certain things. External recording isn't something that I've utilized a whole lot, but I know quite a bit of people who do, and for them, it really is a game changer. Being able to have your phone 
ultimately be your content creation toolkit is kind of insane and it saves you a whole lot of money when it comes to cameras and other equipment. So as far as that goes, it's really nice to see Apple doing it with this device. And given how much benefit they've gave USB-C on this phone, it really makes me wonder what Apple is gonna do with the iPhone 16 and 17 in the future. However, honestly, my biggest gripes with the iPhone were never really about the hardware. Sure, there was the overheating issues that happened at launch, which honestly really did plague the experience for me. I had to go out and actually return my device and purchase a new one just to actually fix that issue. Now, we are eight months into the device's life cycle, and even with using the iOS 18 beta, I don't actually notice any overheating. It also has been really hot outside, and the only time the phone has overheated was when I left it on the dash in my car. So as far as when it comes to the performance and gaming, and recording on this device, none of that seems to really be impacting it as much as it did at launch. So that is definitely a good thing. Now with iOS 18, Apple did make a ton of big improvements that I'm really happy about. First things first, let's just talk about the customization because it's very unlike Apple to do this and I'm so happy that it's actually here. With iOS 18 now, you're finally able to customize your home screen in a lot of ways, not just by moving an app icon around, which thank God they finally added this. It's been a really nice thing to mess around with, but they've also included the ability to tint your icons, use dark themed icons, and they've allowed for different types of customization like the widgets. The big the biggest gripe that I've had with widgets beforehand was that you always had to remove them and add another one if you wanted to change the size. On Android, you're able to just simply resize the widget to get what you want out of it, but this was never a thing on iPhone, and I never really realized how stupid this was until they updated it in iOS 18. You're now finally able to drag and resize the widget. Granted, Apple still does have predetermined widget sizes, but I'm hoping this changes with certain app developers, allowing widgets to be kind of more fluid and allow you to resize them any way that you want but it is a nice welcome change. Also, I am a big fan of the fact that we are finally able to customize our home screen like I mentioned. This has been a pretty big issue for me. I'm someone who really likes to get the Pro Max or you know just the larger phones in general. So what I like to do is put my home screen icons on the bottom and make them more accessible for me. Now, this has always been an issue on iPhone because the grid defaults to the top left automatically. So if you have only four icons on your Apple home screen, they're gonna just get sent straight to the top. And the only way to get around this was to either use widgets to kind of pad out the home screen and add unnecessary clutter, or to actually go around and download third-party widgets that were blank. Now, a lot of these third-party widget applications are free, free, with ads, and then they also add in-app purchases, which can get really expensive. So I'm just glad that we never have to deal with this again, and we're allowed to move our applications anywhere we want to, because it's honestly so stupid that it's been this long and Apple has just decided that now is finally the time. But this has honestly made my experience using the iPhone a lot better. It's allowed me to move the eight applications that I use on a daily basis much lower on the home screen, and it allows for quick access when I need them. Things like my Tim Hortons app are easily available so that I I could purchase coffee. My DJI Mimo app are right there front and center so that I can control my camera wirelessly. And I also have access to other applications like lifestyle apps, like my gym membership, for example, so that I'm able to easily take the QR code or schedule classes. This has single-handedly made the iPhone much more usable for me. And I, I wish I was kidding that it's, it takes something that simple, but it, it really did. Another thing that I'm a really big fan of is the redesign of the control center. So I spent a lot more time with this and I've kind of got it down to how I like it. And I really think that Apple's approach to this was a lot better than I expected. First things first, they did redesign the control center. And I think that the control center now actually looks pretty nice. They've added the ability for you to actually move everything in the control center to a place that is more comfortable for you. So like I have my brightness and my volume on opposite sides of the screen so that I'm easily able to tell which is which. And then I've also added four quick shortcuts for things that I use regularly. I have my voice memos, my screen recorder, my low power mode, and a quick note so that I'm able to easily write something down if I need to while I'm on a phone call or something. They also made this like really big now playing widget, which I think is really nice. You can remove it. All of this is customizable, which is crazy to say. It just makes the phone feel a lot more fluid and a lot more in tune with what I'm doing. And I really like it. 
I think that this change is something that I wasn't expecting, but is pretty welcome because it does actually impact the way that I use the device and it's made it a lot more personal to me. So I can't really complain. Apple is also adding RCS support to the iPhone. It's not currently in this beta update, but it will be. And I'm really excited to see how RCS support actually works because if everyone gets their hands on this and it's actually something that is going to change the way the communication between Android and iOS work, it's gonna make me feel really nice knowing that I will never have to rely on iMessage ever again, especially when I'm communicating with my wife. I think that RCS, is a really big update and a really big thing for Apple to finally come around with an ad. I know it isn't necessarily their opinion. It's not something that Apple wanted to do themselves. It is nice to see. It will change the way that we communicate. It'll finally allow for Android users to send high resolution images and videos to iPhones without the need for a third party application, which I think is just something that it was much needed. Not to mention that Apple is also updating Siri with the new Apple intelligence. And there's a lot of speculation online about how this is gonna work, how safe this is, whatever. All of the stuff that is gonna be done by Apple is supposedly gonna be done on device, which is really nice. And that's probably the most secure way of doing things. However, when you are gonna be using ChatGPT, that is when it's gonna be interacting with Apple's special servers using Apple Silicon. Now, I'm not really a big fan of how this is gonna work. I would like to see someone actually do a deep dive talking about the safety and the logistics of using these servers. But I think that this is a really nice addition nonetheless, because AI on a device, while it is cliche, you know, I will admit that it is a really nice feature. I, I've been using a ton of AI features on Samsung and on Google phones for a very long time now. And just having the ability to do certain things on your device that you weren't necessarily able to do before is really nice to have. Like I've always used the Google Pixel and the S24 Ultra to transcribe voice memos for me because it makes making videos and writing scripts a lot easier when I'm able to just say it naturally and then have it written down for me to copy and paste into a document that I can rewrite. Things like that are quality of life improvements, not just for the device, but for us as well. And I think that it's just nice to have. And Apple is also redesigning the Apple Photos app, which will be adding features like Magic Eraser. Now, I am kind of torn on this because on one hand, it is really awesome that we get this feature on iPhone. It is really weird that this is pretty much a direct ripoff of what Google is doing. That being said, I can't really complain because it is something that I use on a daily basis and for more people to actually get this feature in their hands is really nice. There are some things about the iPhone that I kind of forget about unless I'm carrying one though. And that's like the camera quality. Now this thing has really held up. Like the images and video coming out of this phone are fantastic still to this day. Even though it's been eight months and we've seen a lot of competition in the space, the iPhone is one of the better cameras that are available. And I think it's crazy how good this is as a content creation tool, especially because Apple has really tight knit native support with applications like Instagram and Snapchat. Whether you make like TikTok videos or you make reels and stuff like that, you're getting the best camera that you can get on a phone within those applications. Now, it does kind of suck that there are devices out there like some Xiaomi devices and whatnot that have better cameras on paper, but you'll never really be able to fully utilize them in those kinds of applications. And as a creator, someone who does rely on social media for a living, it is nice to kind of have the best of the best when it comes to making content. Now, it's not something that directly affects my purchasing decision, but it is nice to have when it is in my pocket. I also wanna talk about battery life quick because it's been quite a bit that I've had this device and the battery life has been holding up exceptionally well. I don't remember it being this good and it is surprising because I am on the beta of iOS 18. So to see the battery life still holding strong on a beta, on a device that's eight months old, that's probably just been sitting in a box, it, it's fantastic. So yeah, like in summary, I think that it's been a pretty big 180 with the iPhone. I think that a lot of what I disliked about the phone has changed significantly, especially with iOS 18. And it does suck that this phone is capable of doing so much and it really just comes down to how the software works. Now, this is kind of the same argument with the iPad though, where I would love to use the iPad as a day-to-day -day device. I would love to use it for everything that I do, but even after seeing iPad OS 18, it just, it's very, very sad that Apple decides to continue 
to just limit and limit this device and bottleneck it as much as they can with software to just further allow it to not even be a competitor in their own lineup. Now, another thing that I rely on, which to be honest, I kind of wish that I didn't, is a smartwatch. Now, recently it's become a very crucial tool in fitness because that's something that I'm really working toward, especially over the last couple of months. I've been hitting the gym a lot. I've been trying to stay as active as possible and dealing with a smartwatch like the Pixel Watch or some of these Samsung watches is just not a good experience for me, unfortunately. Now, I've used the Apple Watch Ultra 2 when it was released and I'm continuing to use it now. And there's a reason for that. I think that the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is simply the best smartwatch that you can get. It's definitely expensive and I wouldn't say that it's necessarily worth the price but there are a lot of features in this thing that make it extremely capable. Now the Apple Watch Ultra and its features aside there are things that Apple does with the fitness app that help me stay on track especially being able to keep updated with my friends and family and see how their fitness is going. It just makes me more motivated to get off my ass and actually do something. Like today when filming this video I could have sat inside but I'm actually just trying to fix my rings up and and get my workout going. So I've spent about an hour outdoors walking around and I've already closed my workout ring for the day and it's only 12 in the morning. And that's not including the fact that I'm still gonna go to the gym later. So it's, it's nice, like this thing keeps me motivated more than any other smartwatch that I've ever used. And I think that as a quality of life improvement, the Apple Watch is something that I don't really feel like I could live without anymore. That being said, this Apple Watch isn't necessarily locking me into the Apple ecosystem by any means because this is cellular and I have it attached to my phone plan, but I do still have the S24 Ultra. So I can choose to use this entirely without needing an iPhone in my arsenal, but this is something that I'm definitely gonna continue to use. And I do like the way that it is integrated with the iPhone and the whole Apple ecosystem. It's just a really nice improvement to my life. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just sitting here chit chatting about iOS 18 and the 15 Pro Max after eight months of it being released. I think that the phone definitely has changed a lot and I'm really excited to see where Apple is going in the future with the iPhone. So that being said, if you enjoyed this video and you stuck all the way through, leave an Apple emoji down below in the comments. Let me know what you think about the 15 Pro Max and iOS 18, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.